Leisure in Britain, the sampling of leisure between 1750 to 1815 by Michael Ferrigia, student number 17680859. What is my aim? My aim is to use primary and secondary sources in order to understand what people wrote about during this period, or rather what was being written and done during this time period. <coughs> as well, new innovative ways literature was being used and written during this period in Britain. How have I done this? I have used the following primary sources to investigate my focus on Britain's literacy. Newspapers or newspaper articles, the Britain and the Northern Britain are the two I've used. Picture books, The Governess or the Little Female Academy by Sarah Fielding, published in 1749, and poetry by Jane Austen and William Wordsmith. Translations, Augustine Wilhelm and Skeligal. Novels, Olivia Goldsmith. Newspaper articles, The Britain and the Northern Britain, or The Britain. The Britain was a pro-government newspaper stated by Tarabius Mollett. The Northern Britain was a response to the Britain. Coming out only eight days after the Britain began publication, this paper was a radical newspaper published in the 18th century, written anonymously. However, even though it was anonymous, the name John Weeks is heavily associated with it. Being in prison for the issue 45, where he criticised the royal speech of King George III, Raising the Treaty of Paris ending the Ten Years of War. After imprisonment, Weeks challenged the Warren for his arrest and seized the paper, eventually winning the case. This stated the Weeks and Liberty cry popular slogan for freedom of speech and resistance, resistance to power. Weeks, however, later reprinted the issue, which was seized by the government, however not burned, as an assembly crowded rescued the text. The series of events forced Weeks to flee France which eventually led him to being imprisoned again. Weeks was released from prison in 1770, though issue 45 was still a popular icon not only for Weeks, but of freedom of speech in general, therefore demonstrating the importance of literacy to which in the case a newspaper article had during this time period in Britain to the liberty and movement of people and citizens opposing repression of freedom of speech. Children's Novels In 1749, the very first full-length picture book was published, by Sarah Fielding, which was specifically written for children. This was a, a significant work of 18th century children's literacy, as it was the first of its kind to be published or attempted before. The main aim of this novel was to enforce the ideal that education should be seen as something to be enjoyed rather than for work or a job. Fielding employed fairy tales as well as everyday occurrences to enforce this ideal. Poetry Jane Austen's poetry is unique as she uses satire and humour when she writes. This is evident in her poetry about a pain in my head when she says she uses a good dose of alcohol to rid the headache, and the doctor responding, and so will I, madame. This demonstrates how influential humour was in the literacy world during this period, due to the huge influential her work had during this time period as well even in today's world. The work of Jane Austen was also demonstrated as influential power females had during this period, able to publish works from poetry to novels such as Pride and Prejudice. Translations Augustine William Shakespeare of Skeagle. Augustine William Skeagle translated the works of Shakespeare, making English dramatist work into German classics due to his poetic translations in Germany being of such quantity. The symbol symbolizes the importance of translations during this time period, changing the influential text being read during this period in school and within the general public. Novels, Olivia Goldsmith. The Victor of Wakefield by Olivia Goldsmith was one of the most popular and widely read 17th century novels. 18th century novels. It was a story about the wealth of a man being robbed, forcing him to bankruptcy and, sell and cancellation of a wedding. The story ends with his wealth restored and the wedding proceeding as planned. The novel is important to investigate as it's not only popular and widely read during this time period, but it boys what was considered a good read during this time period. Secondary sources. My secondary sources I've used have given examples of what poetry is like during the 18th century Britain. One suggesting that poetry in the 18th century was pornographic and asks the question between the boundaries between high and low culture lie back then. Other sources I've used are sources talking about how poetry was used as a tool of political reform and free speech. Other sources that have come about are sources which criticize translations as a part of literacy during this period, suggesting it isn't. Problems. <clears throat> Due to the large union area, it is hard to analyze and fill and fit it all content 
Therefore, I have to limit the amount of sources I've used only to important ones. This fearful makes it hard to f hard to fit all the content and limits me to analyze an area beyond the basics. The finding of secondary scholarship of a lot of my sources has also come up as a problem while I'm my investigation, as well as finding a particular newspaper articles I wish to pursue. Statistical data had so far been impossible to find out how many units were sold during this period of particular novels and the prints and the prints of papers in general. The data could be used as compared papers like the Britain and the Northern Britain to see who the people wanted to read from. Therefore, I am trying to find out the number of prints or units of the books during this period to gain a better grasp on their prospect. And that's basically it. Thank you.